What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Falcons Final Whistle. Coming at you live from Raymond James Stadium, very close to midnight, after the Atlanta Falcons lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 48-25. to That's not a close result. Uh, it got really messy there at the end. It got really close in the third quarter, but ultimately the Falcons fall to 0-2, a place that they don't want to be. And we're going to dissect what happened in this game, where things went right, where they went wrong for the Atlanta Falcons, and what it means in the grand scheme. And like I was last time and like I always will be, I am joined by Atlanta Falcons beat reporter and analyst Tori McElhaney and also Atlanta Falcons long-form featured reporter Chris Rim, who is joining us via fancy technology back from the home base in Atlanta. Tori and I are here in Tampa. And, Chris, uh, you were very close to missing out on a full oh, yeah. jet skied or jet ski excursion yesterday. They were right next to our hotel, $99 per hour. Yeah. We almost did it, but we didn't want to leave you out. That was the big problem. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. That was the problem, not the fact that there was, like, a guide and we couldn't go over, like, 25 miles per hour. And we were wor- <laughs> we were worried that we wouldn't be able to hit 45 because that was, that was the only way we were going to do it is if we could go all out with jet skis. That's great to hear. I, I appreciate you, you thinking of me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> would you have gotten on there? You know, even if you had uh, to go through a, a no wake zone, like would you have gone full speed? I don't know. I, water scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at at the speed that we were allowed to go, yeah. they probably wouldn't have scared you. Oh much yeah, at all. no, definitely. Yeah, but that didn't happen. Nor did the Falcons come down to Tampa Bay and come out with a win. And we're going to break this thing down the way that we always do. And that is over four quarters, five minutes each. And I don't think you guys realized it, but there's actually a final whistle sound effect. Here's the the thing. Here's the thing. I was unprepared for there to actually be a whistle. And then I listened back to it and I loved it. I thought it was so great. It actually, because we're just using our phones to time ourselves. Like we don't have an actual whistle just like blaring in our ear. So I loved it. I thought it was great. Beware yeah, the ticking sure. clock, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get right to it. Why don't we go ahead and bang the sound effect right now as we head to the first quarter. Coming up in the first quarter, we're going to look at how and whether the Atlanta Falcons improved from week one to week two. Week one, we know, was a 32-6 to six mess of a game yeah. against the Philadelphia Eagles. This game by the final score and by the box score, 48-25, doesn't look a whole lot better. Chris Rim, was it better? And if so, why or why not? I think it was a lot better. I mean, in terms of the offense, uh, because I thought that this game, the chances, I thought that this game, it would be a great game if we just saw the Falcons score points and do what we expected them to do coming into the season, which is score points. Now, I didn't score like 35 or 40 points, but I thought once they got into their groove and they got things going kind of after that, you know, 25 to 10 mark, I thought they looked, I thought they looked really good. And I thought that even with the loss, like that was a sign of things going in the right direction. Kyle Pitts was heavily involved. He had, you know, seven, five receptions, 73 yards. So I thought, I thought it was a step in the right direction, especially how they looked last week. Yeah, I I tend to agree, and I think a lot of the success hinged upon their ability to convert on third downs. Like, I know we were talking to Matt Ryan after the game, and he he brought it up as saying that was such a difference between even the first half to the second half. They got into the third quarter, and they started converting on third downs, and he he even said, like, we were converting on third downs that, you know, arguably were difficult third downs to convert on. So I think that was a big improvement from week one to week two I also thought that they ran a much cleaner operation I know that there was like that false start on second down that Jalen Mayfield had and then there was that series where Arthur Smith had to call two time two timeouts because of uh, clock and and not enough men on the field but other than that I thought that the operation was very clean I didn't think that there were nearly as many I mean honestly they were there was near wasn't nearly as many penalties as there were in week one. And I thought that was really, really important. And I will say this, I know that the Buccaneers put up for over 40 points on the Falcons defense, but I wasn't incredibly disappointed in what I saw from this Falcons defense, because I think Arthur Smith said it best where he was like, the score got out of hand 
because of the offense, not the defense. And I, I agree with that 100%. Okay. So I'm going to be the Debbie Downer here. Is yeah, that, go ahead. That's my role here. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, yeah, it looks better and it's a cleaner operation, but we're taking it from kind of a low standard, right? Oh, that, yeah. And, and that is part of the problem. And the bar is on the ground. <laughs> right. And bar so low that you can step over it. Uh, and I, I think that if we're looking at it from that vantage, it looks better, but it's still not nearly good enough. It, yes, they played the Super Bowl champs the number one team and Scott Bear's undisputed power rankings that are coming out on Tuesday <laughs> at AtlantaFalcons.com. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't think this beats the number 16 team. Mm-hmm. I really don't. That While they looked better and they showed fight and there there's reasons to be encouraged, the offensive line still had problems. Too yeah. many batted balls. And while Jalen Mayfield's name was only called once, they still weren't good. They have a right tackle problem. Yeah, They, they have a rushing efficiency problem. Yeah. And that's not me just – I guess I am being a pessimist here, but I I think that yes, it did improve, but I think we're a, a, a ways from being good. Now, all that terribleness said, uh, Chris, uh, I think we did see a couple of good signs from two um, emerging offensive weapons that uh, you wrote about for the website. Yeah, and, and Cordero Patterson and, and Kyle Pitts, which you can check out on AtlantaFalcons.com. Shame <laughs> plug. Yeah, that's the first one, but. But yeah, I thought um, I thought they both impressed and both did. I, I mean, Carrera Patterson on the on as far as returning, he was just effective by just being there. I mean, <laughs> true. He, just, he, he he was just on the field and they didn't kick to him, which gave Avery Williams some opportunity um, to get some return. So I th- I thought you know getting getting them and you know into the off- offense today was great. Um, seeing Cordero Patterson score, I thought he only had 11 yards um, on the game, but the numbers. I don't think showed exactly how effective he was. I thought him and Kyle both made important plays when the team needed it. It didn't turn into a win, but Cordero Patterson got them a touchdown and then a two point conversion on the Matt Ryan um, zone read, which I was, that was crazy. Shocking. Um, mm-hmm. that, <laughs> <laughs> Just but, shocking. <laughs> but yeah, so, so I thought I was really impressed by, by them, by Cordero more than Kyle. I think I kind of expected this kind of stuff from Kyle, but I think the past two weeks, Cordell has really surprised me. And yeah, I think he, he's amazing. Yeah. And so I think that we can all admit that we did see progress. Maybe I wanted a bit more, a bit faster, and this is might be slower going as they continue to pick up the pace and hopefully continue improvement. That's what Arthur Smith definitely wants to see. We're on to quarter number two and the clock has started. Uh, five minutes to to discuss what still needs to improve. The answer cannot be everything. That's <laughs> that's my one rule here. Uh, the answer cannot be everything, although everything does need to get better so they can right. improve results. But nonetheless, uh, let's get granular here, Tori. Uh, you had Tori's takeaways. You talked about, shameless plug number two, for you. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, uh, in what areas do you think that this team needs to get better fast? Oh, gosh. Well, you brought up the offensive line. I think I would be – just I, I have to bring it up like you know it's one of those things that it's an issue that we cannot overlook you talked about the issues now that are kind of emerging at right tackle I think that there were some glaring mistakes that Caleb McGarry made tonight and I think one of the main ones was on third down uh, right before the second shanked punt that I'm sure we will talk about that whole entire situation later in quarter three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be talking about that soon. Uh, no, but like for real, Caleb McGarry just kind of whiffed on on that. And I think that was the reason that you saw Corderell Patterson have a loss of three yards on that third down. It's why they had to punt. So um, for me, it's protection, but it's also you were talking about the run game as well having more productivity in the run game. I I was really wanting to see more out of Mike Davis than I think what we've seen up until this point. And I think a lot of that is in run blocking. I mean, I think so many issues kind of stem from the offensive line right now. Yeah, if if, if I'm going to look at this thing as a whole, I, I don't know if this is a cop-out answer or not, probably, but I'm still going to give myself points for it in – when we're not keeping actual score. But nonetheless, I I do feel like consistency is a problem, that we saw better from the defense in spurts. We saw better tackling. We saw pressure, mostly with blitzes, but Mm -hmm. whatever. As long as you get to Tom Brady, that's all that matters. But early in the game, I think Tom Brady had three explosive pass plays on the first drive alone. Right. And and 
they fell behind quickly. So I, I'm talking myself in, into this now, but let's just say better starts that 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 they need to start better. They need to finish more. Um, I was encouraged by the red zone play yeah. here today, but getting behind to a quarterback like that is going to be nothing but trouble. Um, Chris, what do you think uh, needs to get fixed here as they head towards a very winnable game against the uh, New York Giants? Yeah, I just I, I just think the offensive line would be my main thing. I think when you look at Tom Brady's performance and you juxtapose that with Matt Ryan's, I think I honestly believe that not saying that Matt Ryan is Tom Brady or better than Tom Brady, but Matt Ryan is a good quarterback. Um, he's thrown for 4,000 yards the past, you know, 10 season. He's, he's not, he's not a scrub. Uh, so <laughs> he's not, he's not, yeah, he's not, he's not a guy who throws, you know, three interceptions in a, in a game. That's not, you know, when you, it, the, the numbers say that, but if you watch the game, it was, it was, you know, many reasons why that happened. So I think um, when you look at Tom Brady and the fact that he can just sit there in the pocket and the one time that one of the few times where we, where there was pressure on him, it was there was a fumble force and there was a turnover. So I think if if the offense, in order for Matt Ryan and for the offense to be successful, the offensive line has to improve. I also thought there were some questionable play calls today, like the fourth and three, um, oh, where they yeah. they did a sneak on fourth and three and then punted on fourth and one, um, and then they they tried to get people to jump off sides um, on a, on a punt. But but I, but those are just a few few different plays. But I think overall, the first thing that comes to my mind is is offensive line, especially when you look at two non-mobile guys playing against each other and one is sitting back there and just dotting the, the defense, defensive backs getting all day while the other one um, doesn't have as much time. And because of that, he, you know, had interceptions and, and, and things like that. So I think the offensive line, I think, has to get better. I think when you look at this defensive backfield, which we, we don't know what the status of A.J. Uh, Terrell is. Right. He suffered a uh, concussion in the second half. After a stellar play, stellar play, like he put his body on the line, like that was amazing. I love that. It it, it was, and he saved two touchdowns over the course of this game, and really showed what the three of us had seen from him throughout training camp. Mm -hmm. That this guy was, and even before then, right? He he was on the verge of kind of doing special things that we saw here on Sunday night. But I think that there are too many opportunities and the big chunk plays are a major problem where mm-hmm. it's just too much cushion for uh, for to be consistently productive. I, I think, you know, pe- rushing coverage come together, but nonetheless, it needs to come together better, needs to come together faster. Starting off the third quarter with a question I'm going to point uh, directly to Miss McElhaney. What was the turning point in this game? Oh. Can you identify it yes. right away? Yes, I can. I now, you might. everyone, listen up. Just setting the scene. I wish I had some dramatic music playing in the background, uh-huh. like as, as I'm <laughs> describing this. But as the editor, now you're challenging me to go find it. Yeah, go find okay, it good. and add it underneath this voiceover. But, you know, it's third down at the end of the third quarter. The Falcons are only down by three points. And you are third in like in a couple inches. Even Arthur Smith said third in inches. I think he made a point to say third in inches. And you don't convert, and you don't. You don't not only don't convert, you get a loss of three on a handoff to Cordero Patterson, and then there's a shank of a punt that only goes 33 yards, and <laughs> Tampa Bay gets the ball back inside the 50, and you're looking at it, and then Tom Brady just picks off this Falcon secondary and has. Three, it's a three-play drive, a three-play drive to get into the end zone. That, to me, was the swing. If you're pointing to a momentum swing, a momentum change, that was it. When the Falcons don't convert on offense, the bad punt, and then three plays for Tom Brady to get into the end zone, that that was just – that was the moment that I think I hung on like post-game. It was the moment that I wrote about post-game. And now I'm sitting here talking about it and in scene. <laughs> you can stop you can stop the music now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I, I do think that you're almost so right that instead of us trying to argue maybe something else, why don't we get into that a little bit more? Let's go off script here a little bit and dive into kind of the the swing that you're talking about, right? That obviously and let's go to special teams. Special teams hurt the Falcons yeah. today. Um, most notably the, the punter had a couple of missteps, right? And how much of an effect does that 
have on this game? How much of an effect does it have on this team? It, se- it seems very clear that Bruce Arians was not going to let Cordero Patterson oh, yeah. beat them. Yeah. He was kicking away from him. And, you know, and, and uh, Bradley Pinion, mm-hmm. the, the Bucks punter, was excellent pinning the team inside the 20. That was something that, that – uh, that was a weapon – that the Falcons didn't have. I mean, that's what bag. set them up for that that three and out was they were pinned all the way inside their ten and couldn't come out. That's that was what happened, right? And that that's the same exact play that we're talking about where they go third, they go three and out after he mm-hmm. pins them back. Like I'm pretty positive that was the that was the same thing that we're talking about. So like you have the punter pinning them inside the ten, then they can't get out. They're on three and out, and then you're having to have Cameron Nislek punting almost from the end zone and it only goes 33 yards. Like, that's tough. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And wh- while we can look at special teams, Chris, also the rushing efficiency that you were talking about, right, that the, the overall numbers aren't very good. Mm-mm. And yeah, I think Mike Davis had a third and one that he wasn't able to uh, convert earlier in the game. When it, like, when it matters most, uh, is this run game doing enough, you know, uh, especially in obvious uh, rushing situations? Yeah, well, well, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think. I think the challenge when looking at the run game and evaluating the run game after two weeks is that you're talking about a banged up offensive line, a young offensive line that has played against two of the best defensive lines in the league. Mm-hmm. So I think that plays a role in the run game. So I think before we, yes, to answer your question, yes. But I think before we really evaluate the run game, we need to see how it performs in the next few weeks against some of the some of the weaker defensive lines. Yeah, and and I do think that that that's fair because going up yeah. against Philly, we the, Philly's defensive line ha- had a good day against San Francisco, and we know how stout the Tampa Bay interior defense is from defensive tackle all the way through the defensive backfield. So I do think that that is important here, Tori. But how do you put this? You know, like over the next you know forty seconds or so that we got, how do you put what what happened here in kind of a greater context that the Falcons were surging and then one missed up and the wheels kind of came off yeah. here. Where do you, th- you know, like, why do you think that, that this turning point that you're talking about ended up in an absolute collapse in the fourth quarter? Yeah. I also think, I mean, it's just, it's tough because I think we've seen this with the Falcons, even in years past where it, one thing goes wrong and then it's just like a cascading effect of something else going wrong like what you said the wheels falling off it's like once something quote unquote bad happens it's almost like they can't stop it because then after you know Tampa Bay goes down and scores Matt Ryan throws a pick six so and then there's another pick six later on I mean it's just one thing after the other after the other and also something that we're not talking about is like during that time like AJ Terrell goes out with a concussion like and we know he's not coming back so it's just like one thing after another it's almost like you know you always hear like the injury bug like that it's a bug bite that goes around the entire team that's exactly what I feel like is happening in just all this kind of stuff We're heading into the fourth and final quarter and trying to look at this game as a whole. It's a good question that Toy wrote down here. Are we satisfied? Are Falcons fans satisfied? Not just the ones on Twitter. They satisfied by seeing progress, even with with another negative result. Finally got that one right. (laughs) Uh, Even if they didn't win, can you be pleased with the night as a whole? Or do you have to get real granular uh, to find signs for optimism? I think... If you look at the point, the Falcons are now. Anything was better than what we saw last week. Yeah. Anything is better than what we saw in week one. And I think, you know, I wrote down that question and I'm almost rethinking the word satisfied because I don't think it's the right word. Because I don't think, like, you're obviously not satisfied in a loss like that. Mm-hmm. But I think we have to look at this game for what it was. It's the Falcons coming off a game where they did not score a touchdown coming in to play the Super, the reigning Super Bowl champions at home, that to me, anything that they did that was progress, that was going to be important to see. And, and I was looking for any type of progress. I was like, you can only go up. You cannot go down. And I think I did see progress in certain areas. I think the Falcons were competitive with Tampa Bay, at least for the third quarter. You know, like they they did. They came back and – cut it down to a three-point swing. I mean, that's that was impressive. That whole entire run was impressive. But it's making sure that this is some that they are impressive for four quarters, not one quarter, not a half, 
all four quarters. And I feel like that's something I wrote about all last year. It's something I thought about last year. It's something that I still think about now. So that to me is just, that's just where my head is at. Like I was looking for progress. I saw progress. Does that mean I'm satisfied? Meh. Chris, well then where, where is your head at after this one in relation to how they played and also incorporating the fact that, that they're still 0-2 heading into a trio of what we would assume would be winnable games against the Giants, Washington, and the Jets? Well, I, w- I would say to answer the question about satisfied, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't think fans are satisfied or, or should be satisfied. Like, I think, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you, how you could be. I think any, anything, I think from last week to this week, um, obviously there's progress and there's things to point to um, in terms of, you know, all you have to do this week was score a touchdown, you know, for there to be progress. But I think, in terms of this week, the, like we said earlier, the offense got going. So I think if we think about fans, they're I think they're 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 thinking this is the Super Bowl champs, and we we scored twenty five points against them. But for me, I just can't get the thought out of my mind of the moment when on the broadcast at least when when Matt Ryan threw the the, the first pick that he threw that was batted up in the air and caught. He just looked so defeated um, at, at that time when it was just 41. He looked so defeated. Then the second one, he looked even more defeated. And and uh, that that's the thought. I think there was so much progress going into that point. And then once he threw that first pick and just looking at the image of him on the ground, his face was red and he screamed something, I think, that we can't say on here. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it's just like, man, everything was going. Everything was seeming to go in. Well, right before that, the punt happened. But everything seemingly was going in the right direction. And then this happens. So I think there's definitely some positives to, to take away, but I, I don't think you can be satisfied, but I think you feel a lot better than you felt after Philly. Yeah. I mean, isn't it just like more frustrating to see them do so well, you know, like they did so well right. in that third quarter and then for the, the ending to be what it was, I think in terms of satisfaction versus frustration, it's way more on the other side of, of frustration. I mean, you can be satisfied that they did better than they did in week one, but you can be frustrated yeah. in knowing that they can look as good as they did in that third quarter and lose the game. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point that I tried to explore for 800 words of cyberspace ah. that I took up uh, with a column, shameless plug number shameless three. Shameless plug. Ding. We need a sound three. effect for we that. We surely for sure. do, yeah. Yeah, uh, more sound effects. Uh, Eventually, it'll just ding, be the ding. Falcon sound effect yeah. podcast with uh, Chris, Torrey, and Scott. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, uh, the fight versus the final result, right? That That's what we're trying to figure out here. And I think ultimately the fight was in, in, encouraging because they could have curled up and died after going down 28 to 10. And they didn't. But to Chris's point, right, what happened after that? Um, imagine if, 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 if a team in better standing did that the Vans would be like going completely insane, but we're grading this team on a different curve. So that's where I think you really have to adjust your, your insight and like, and the way that you look at this thing and try to figure out exactly where this team stands, what it means. And that's why it is kind of murky. And that was four quarters of the Falcons final whistle. I, another sound effect. I didn't have to. I think I'm that just going to do the sound effects like moving forward from now on. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to sing the dramatic music too? Cause oh, I but I can't that. do, I can't do the dramatic music and speak at the same time. I'm not that talented. Okay. Well, as talented maybe as I am. Come up with like a loop or something. I don't know. We'll Technology. figure it out. Yeah. Uh, we're we gonna have, work on that. We have so many weeks of this season talk, to figure it out. Talk to Sam. Talk to Sam about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to work Shout on that. Sam. And uh, we're going to work on that. In between episodes, the next one, Chris Rim and I are gonna, going to be coming to you live from MetLife Stadium in the Big Apple after Falcons-Giants. That's going to be interesting. But in between those times, in between the time that you're listening to this podcast and then, you know what you got to do, right? You got to go give us a rating. Give us a review. Subscribe on Spotify, iTunes. Click on YouTube if that's your preferred medium to uh, yes. consume podcasts. Do it. We would appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, more sound effects next uh, next time. I yeah. feel like that's leave a, leave a review about the sound effects. Yeah, <laughs> tell me what sound effects you want to hear next week. 
next week on, on Falcons Final on Whistle. Final <laughs> okay, it's now officially 11.33. We've all lost our minds. <laughs> I'm going to hit stop before we go even crazier. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, it's been a joy bringing this to you so far. Thanks for all the positive uh, reviews and remarks to the last episode, and we look forward to talking to you next week.